Hello all, my name is Jazz Rivera, and I'll be talking about how we as humans adapt to technology and not the other way around. So I have a one-year-old daughter, and she is my electronic device's worst enemy. She's beginning to walk, so now she's at that stage where kids pretty much get into everything. Um, you know, my cell phone is in her mouth, I'm hearing disc trays opening and closing, my Xbox controller is on the kitchen floor for some reason, it's hectic. But overall, I see it as her adapting to her surroundings. You know, TVs, laptops, cell phones, tablets, gaming consoles. These are all around kids these days. This is what they interact with on a daily basis. You know, interacting with things completely different from only a few decades ago. Uh, the parents of Generation X were witnessing some amazing breakthroughs dealing with computers and great household stuff like calculators, VCRs, Walkmans, and microwaves. But as kids being surrounded by all this stuff at such a young age, it was easy for them to grasp and pick up compared to their parents who were being introduced to them at an older age. Granted, of course, some caught on quickly, but a lot of people I'm sure didn't. Think of it like this. I know a few people that simply can't do anything on a computer, and they have been around computers all their lives. So back to an entire generation being introduced later on as adults, it would have been hard to grasp. But for their kids, it was the norm for them, a huge contributing factor towards the creative inventions and daily tools that has graced Generation Y. Kids and teens of that generation saw young men like Bill Gates and Steve Jobs bring forth new horizons of technology into the world, and men even walking on the moon. A lot of these factors helped mold the brains of the X generation. Great influences for such an influential generation. I mean, you got Michael Dell, uh, CEO of Amazon, Jeff Bezos, and minds behind YouTube and Google are all from that generation. So as you can see, there's a pattern going on. All right, the children growing up around tech that was invented by the generation before were the ones evolving those tools for their own generation and the generation after. Generation X really went in and outdid themselves, I think. You know, now in their 30s and early 40s, they're the ones paving the way for our technological society. And a lot of, you know, what we see today are those minds that grew up and saw a great idea and made it their own. So as Gen Y was growing up with the earlier versions of today's tech, we've evolved from basically only just two to three generations. With people still alive from back then, that means that all that has led to our modern day of living has evolved drastically in literally one's lifetime. So as his predecessors, our spoiled uh, little Generation Y growing up with dial-up internet, CDs, camcorders, and huge breakthroughs in gaming. You know, we grew up seeing new things literally popping up everywhere. And I feel like we're very fortunate to see the transition of what was to what it is now. You know, it's a nice medium we fall in. Our generation is pretty lucky to see all that. So now, us as Gen Y is out in the world, and we're making their mark. You know, we grew up with that just do it and go get them attitude. For example, right now there are a group of students at Penn State who are actually building a moon lander. Students, and that's insane. You know, inspiring the private industry. The students from Penn State are the only student-led group competing for the $40 million Google Lunar X Prize. So, look at that. You know, in 2009, Pride of Mystery, for instance, born 1981, introduced a computer that you wear and is used with natural hand gestures. Uh, Mystery goes on to say that the sixth sense frees uh, information from its confines by seamlessly integrating it with reality and thus making the entire world your computer. Just using some simple mirrors and pocket projectors and some um, caps for the fingers, he's able to manipulate that. Thiago David Olsen, born in 1989, created a homemade nuclear fusion reactor back in 2006. Only 17 year old at, uh, years old at the time, uh, he accomplished something that rewarded him a second place prize in the Intel International Science and Engineering Fair in 2007. They even named the planet after the guy. You know, Generation Z, those born uh, 1995 to now, have been around this modern day technology since diapers. Growing up with tablets, Xboxes, cell phones, and Netflix, this is pretty much the norm for them. Kids and preteens these days are extremely dependent on technology. I'm not doubting it though, they are simply taking advantage. Although some see it as bad, the truth is, is that they have turned into self-efficient young adults. You know, last year, a five-year-old found the back door to his dad's Xbox Live account. The experts at Microsoft were left bewildered as they tried and figured out how exactly he did it. Xbox rewarded the kid with a 12-month subscription to Xbox Live and a couple of games. Amazing to see how someone so young can figure something like that out. Me personally, I would have asked for a job, but just saying. They have the internet at their disposal. Okay, Every second of the day, they can look up information so easily and grow from the information that they find. My nephew, Anthony, he loves watching gameplay videos on YouTube. By seeing both the mistakes and the beneficial things the player does, he can use that to be a better player. Just imagine a different outcome if we had the technology a few decades ago. Everyone would have beat Zelda in like about a day. So now we have Generation Alpha, the group that will probably be the cause of Skynet and have Terminators running all over the place. This is the category my daughter falls into. She is amazingly curious of everything around her, especially my electronics. Not only have I noticed it, but the toy companies have as well. At Walmart, I saw an iPad baby bouncy seat by Fisher Price. 
All right, the American Academy of Pediatrics feels that entertainment media should be avoided for infants and children under two completely, which kind of makes sense. You know, I myself have been more uh, vigilant towards my daughter's Sesame Street Netflix binges, but I don't see the problem of having her watch a little bit throughout the day. You know, there are some people who welcome the electronics and feel like it's very beneficial. During an interview with Race, uh, Race Juarez from PBS, writer Hannah Rosen thinks that the more interactive technology is, the more children learn from it. Shows like Blue's Clues and Door the Explorer ask a question and leave a pause so that the kids can answer, making it a little bit more personal. But with more tech introduced each day, I feel that monitoring is very important. Too much of a good thing can have its faults. So I did some research, and I looked up uh, a timeline of events and technical advances that logically make sense that Generation Z and Generation Alpha will be uh, big parts of. In the 2050s, there will be genetically engineered babies, handheld MRI scanners, radio telescopes built on the moon, um, and pretty much the end of the oil age. There's also speculation of continent-wide supergrids providing much of the world's energy needs. In the 2060s and 70s, there will be antimatter powered spacecrafts, fusion power uh, will be widespread, nanotech clothing, practical flying cars, uh, fully automated homes, and expansions of moon bases. All in all, I haven't seen a hoverboard and power shoelaces yet, so we'll see how accurate this is when the time comes. Doc has been literally, literally been slacking. So while the future is still in diapers, I feel like it is our job to continuously have them interact with our technology in a helping way. Not just planning them in front of a tablet, but enjoying it together. As they take all of it in, they are adapting to the technology, not the other way around. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did making it and uh, researching the topic. Thank you very much. Salute.